In the previous video, we learned that we can calculate the heat exchange from a calorimeter, which we can equate to the enthalpy change under constant pressure. And now we will see what are the other methods we can use to calculate the delta H of a chemical reaction. So the second method is from the heat of formation. Heat of formation is nothing but, that is also called enthalpy of formation. That is nothing but the heat energy associated with the production of one mole of compound from its elements in the standard states. Standard states are given here. And um, the enthalpy formation of elements in standard state is zero because it's not forming from anything. Element is just element in the ground state. So we will consider that one as zero. It's not combining with anything. Only for compounds, we will talk about heat of formation. Okay, that is also for one mole of the substance. So the formula we will be using is change in enthalpy, that is delta H reaction equal sigma, that's a sum sigma of delta H of formation of products minus sigma, again, the sum of delta H of formation of reactants. That is the second method. Okay, so before we try an example using that formula, let me just clear this one out. What is the standard enthalpy of formation? Okay, the standard enthalpy of formation of one mole of carbon dioxide is shown here from its elements, carbon and oxygen, it, carbon dioxide is formed and it is in one mole and everything looks balanced. And the delta H of is nothing but delta H under standard condition, that is what that zero indicates, equal negative 393.5 kilojoules. That is the standard enthalpy of formation of carbon dioxide from its element form. And um, why is it negative? Is because it is an exothermic thermic process, so delta H is negative value. Now, in this case, we can see ozone is formed from oxygen, but there are two moles here, so we need for one mole. So whatever value you can see here, half of that we will take for one mole. So that will be 286 divided by 2, 143 kilojoules. That is the heat of formation of ozone. Now let us try this example here. You can see the substances given here and delta H value for delta H formation values are given here. Okay, that is the way the problem will look like. And the given the information above, calculate the delta H reaction for the following chemical reaction. So we have this chemical reaction here, three aluminum. So delta H for aluminum, we will take it as zero because it's in the ground state. And we have NH4ClO4, the delta H formation is given as negative 295, and we have three of them, so three times negative 295, and that gives you Al2O3, we have negative 1676, and for AlCl3, it is negative 704 plus 3NO, so three times 90 plus six times water, water is negative 242. Okay, so now let us simplify this one. I will do this way, and uh, I think this is going to be easy for students as well, because we are not going to make any mistake in this way. So instead of writing directly into the formula, so let us solve it here first. So this one will be, when you simplify, you can see that is negative 885. And this is going to be negative 1676. And uh, this is negative 704 plus 270 plus negative 1452. Simplify that one again. So that will be... I'll use a different color. Negative 885. When you simplify this one, negative 1676 minus 704 plus 270 minus 1452. Correct? Again, simplify. So 885 plus 
pi, negative 3, 8, 3, 2, plus 2, 70, and then negative 8, 8, 5, negative 3, 5, 6, 2. And now we can substitute in the formula that is delta H reaction equals sigma of delta H of products minus sigma of delta H of reactants. That equal product means negative 3, 5, 6, 2 minus minus 8, 8, 5. That will be negative 3, 5, 6, 2 plus 8, 8, 5. Five. That equal negative two six seven seven kilojoules per mole reaction. That's going to be the answer for this question. Now the third method is from bond energy values. So if the bond energy values are given, so before that, what are what is the meaning of bond energy? Bond energy is defined as the amount of energy required to break apart a mole of molecules into its component atoms. So how much energy is required to break the bond in short. Okay. So the formula we will be using is delta H equal sigma of bond energy is broken minus sigma of bond energy is formed. Bond energy is broken are for reactants. Reactants, the bonds will br break, and for products, the bonds will form. Remember that, okay? So, this is the third method. Here is an example of bond energy of different compounds and different bonds, I mean, in different compounds. So, in the question, the bond energies will be given either in the table form or most probably like this form here. Okay, so even in this case, we can see nitrogen, two lines here, nitrogen, three lines here. So each case is different. So if it is nitrogen, double bond, nitrogen, so two lines means double bond, three lines means triple bond. If it's only one line, that is single bond. So we will learn more about this one in bonding chapter next week. So each one is different. You can see the energy required to break the bond is different. If it is double bond, for 18, if it is triple bond, 946. So that is different. And uh, we will use these values in the calculations. So let us see an example here. Using bond energies, calculate the change in enthalpy that accompanies the following reaction. So hydrogen combines the fluorine to form HF. So hydrogen is just H single bond H and fluorine is just fluorine single bond F and gives two moles of HF. That is the balanced chemical equation and we know how is that going to look like. Okay, so for the test I will be giving you this one because you haven't practiced how to draw this structure which is called a Lewis structure that we will explain next week. Uh, but for the bonding chapter, if I'm giving a quiz or test, I will give you like this, okay? And now, and H and H is 432. I will write that here. And F and F, 154. And HF is 565. So, 2 times 565. So, we have to add this one. And let us simplify this one as well. So this side it's going to be 586 and when you multiply this one, okay, and now we know delta H equal bonds broken as I said that is for the reactants. So the reactants bond will break and new bonds will form in the products, okay. So 586 minus 1130 
let's see how much is that that's going to be minus 544 kilojoules per mole reaction that's how we will do this in this third method 